Hello. In this video I'm going to show you how to obtain faction points. There is more than one method. One of them is to feed the New Horizons transporters with occupation products. Um, I'm not going to show you this one mainly because I don't really have enough occupation products and secondly because it would be awfully boring. Instead, what I'm going to do is show how to do a delivery run, an, a kitten observation camp delivery run. Now, that's a mouthful. If you're wondering what the hell that is, it's pretty easy. Um, there's, a, there's a story arc going on right now. The entire planet is, was attacked by uh, aggressive insects called kittens. And all, all the game nations have in turn tried to defend against them. So they have um, set up observation camps for the kitten movement. Y where you come in is that you can do delivery runs for those observation camps. You are given packages which you have to deliver safely. And in exchange you get some money and some faction points. Faction points are actually very important in the game. It is only with faction points that you can buy some stuff. For instance, you can buy special picks for the diggers. You, those picks have extra focus, which is very important in digging. You really want extra focus. And some low HP bonus, which again is important too. Not that much, but still in some to some degree. You can also buy um, sap recharges, which I'm not going to cover right now. For for beginner players, it is especially important because you can buy um, experience catalyzers with them. They double your experience while you have an, a catalyzer active. So, um, yep. You really want to have those sweet, sweet faction points. I'm doing this run in in the Fyrus Nation, mainly because the character is aligned with the Fyrus, so she's going to get a lot of points. And secondly, because in my um, maybe not a, not so educated opinion, this run is the easiest to do. E even a beginner player can do it, unlike runs in a, in the Mattis region or in a, in lakes or whatever else. In Mattis, for instance, you have to run all the way from Majestic Garden to Heretic Sovel. And Heretic Sovel is a pain in uh, you know where. And then you have to run all the way up, back to Hidden Source and Grove Confusion. Regions that are again pains in, uh, in, in special places. Now I need a mount to do this. It is not told to you before you, you reach the starting point. But uh, of course I know, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that, buy a mount, buy some food for it. Then put some food in the mount inventory. To add you have... Ideally you want to have the best dodge you can. A master player has some good advantages just because they have good dodge. Free to play only has 131 because of of level. Actually I have some advantage over a beginner player because I have uh, on this character I have a, a skill at level 125 and then the, the armor adds up a bit plus one dodge from every armor piece. I can further add to this by, by using some knives. Um, they each add they can add plus 20 dodge modifier. That's, that's the max, of course. It could add less, but anyway, in this case I have plus 40 over mine, so it's 171. It's not that bad, but it's not going to protect me from, from the higher region mobs anyway. This being said, we can start running. The starting point for the Fires region is very close to four ways. We're going to see it in a moment. Basically all you have to do is um, take a package, put it in your mount inventory, 
run to the next camp, deliver the package, get the new package, and so on. Of course, the missions uh, get progressively more difficult. The first two or three camps should be very easy for anyone, but the last two camps should be the most difficult ones. It is ideal that you don't uh, lose the mount, you don't get it killed, because then you you can't give up the mission. Well, you, you can give up the mission, but you can't uh, you can't easily transfer the package from the dead mount to anything else. You basically, need the help of another player to hold the package for you or deliver a mount to your uh, to your current location. Why is that? Because the package itself is very, very heavy. We'll see in a moment. And if you have the package in your inventory, in your own inventory, you can't move. So, you can see I was given a package, this uh, heavy package. And uh, it, it weighs 600 kilos, which means I have a speed factor of completely 0%. I can't move right now, even if I tried. However, if I put it in the mount inventory, I'm suddenly back at 100%. And I can start the delivery. In the desert, the first two camps are um, ridiculously easy and sort of close to each other, which is very nice in my opinion. I forgot to mention you get about uh, 10,000 dappers per each camp that you visit. It's not too much, it's only 60,000 dappers. In, in, you're not going to get rich because of this. You, you you're still going to be doing it doing it mostly for the faction points, but still, getting the money means it covers your mount costs, your food costs, and general just helps a bit. Apparently, this clopper gave up chasing me, which is nice. Oh, it didn't. I was trying to get the attention of the guards in the camp. They're not very... very careful. Okay, here we go. I sort of hate cloppers. They, they're oversized mobs. They, Well, they do give extra experience when killed, but if you're not going to kill them, they, they really suck. They give you... They, they do a lot of damage to you. Especially for a lower player caught in front of them. If you are surrounded, you might as well just be dead. Or just start running away very soon. Okay, so I did my first delivery. I got 100 faction points. That's very few, but it's, it's something. I'm moving the package, I'm mounting, and I'm going to move on to the second camp in Freher Towers. This one looks a bit far, but it's an aggro freeway usually. It's just right in in around. So camp one was 100 faction points, and then we can do the math at the end. So this northern portion of uh, of Freyhard Towers is. Uh, it's still pretty aggro free if you are close, if, if you are uh, careful and you avoid dangerous mobs like Goeries or Cloppers. If you're lucky, you could even see a boss and call for a team to kill it. Right here could be an, a boss Isam, Isakath, or a boss um, Frehar, Frakath.
Should we have aggro on our tail, we could always visit um, the Freyher Hunters camp. They are friendly to most of the homins. Thankfully it's not needed for us, but just, uh, just as a side note. Now, the season is winter, which means there might be more aggro than usual on the way. As we can see, there's like three fairings there, at least. So I have to just navigate around them. As usual, reminder that in uh, when traveling in Ryzen, you might you, you should use the compass. Just look for yellow dots, and if the yellow dots ahead represent aggro, try to navigate between them. See, there's a lot. That's a lot of Freyhars. They are virus primitives, and um, for some reason they are really aggressive. I guess they hate us for being superior. I don't really have too many options here. So I'm going to take a large detour until I can find a way. Now this looks like it. Zergs are, um, are aggros too. So I need to go around them if I can. It really sucks in a in a in a way. The server doesn't. Uh, it's not really real time. The mobs basically move with a few milliseconds delay. So basically, if you see a mob being thirty meters away from you, it could already be twenty five meters close to you, because on the server side it has already moved. Just that the data didn't make it to you. So you have to keep that in mind, I guess. Okay, apparently I am chased by a mob. Thankfully these guards are a bit more careful and they uh, they killed it before it even reached me. As I said, the first two deliveries are fairly um, eventless. Again, I have to move the back the package in my bag, we'll give the package to the overseer and receive a new package back. You would expect the package to to become to be less weighty the more you, you deliver. You would expect everyone to take parts of it and give you like like a package only 400 kilos weighty doesn't happen. I guess it would be too much to have six, um, five different packages given to you depending on uh, on the camp, whatever. It doesn't even matter too much, it's just I noticed it in uh, just, not, just an idle thought while traveling. Now camp number three is fairly fairly difficult to get to. You have an you have a good route, you can go through Oflovex Oasis, Canyon Pass, blah blah, that's uh, that's not that's not a difficult portion, but you once you are in Lucent Headhurst, you are in Outlaw Canyon, that's a um, level 200 region, and crossing the way b between the last bridge and the camp might prove to be difficult. You'll see in a, just a moment what I'm talking about. The, the proof that uh, I consider this portion of the road to be easy is just that I spent lots of time just showing you the map instead of concentrating on the road. Doesn't really matter. Okay, it's uh, it's daylight, so I can turn off my my own light. Actually, the desert is a bit too light to be honest, during daytime. And then during nighttime it gets awfully, awfully dark. I forgot to, to note down, I gained 250 faction points from camp 2. Let's note that. Maybe I shouldn't run through all these aggros. 
as a free to play as I said cloppers do a lot of damage one of them managed 500 damage 500 points of points of damage that's a lot even even for a clopper standards so you have to go past this uh, this ramp there's a ramp going down in in Outlaw Canyon you have to take the bridge for the for the upper por portion some people tend to crash here not too many but I've seen crashes I still even myself crashed like two times I think with no uh, with no apparent reason I guess that there's a lot of objects to load but uh, I'm not really sure to be honest My computer seems to be very busy loading some stuff. So suddenly the, the frame rate just dropped a bit and uh, I can hear my hard disk spinning. I have no idea what's this UBO level 46 doing here. As I said, the region level is much higher. It is 150 up to 200. Okay, I'm going to sit for a moment, just for a moment, until the computer catches up. And use the time to observe the, the surroundings. I only see herbivores for some reason, which is good. Oh, there we go, there's a pharynx. That's two pharynx, that's a lot of pharynx and usual freyhars. Maybe if we can stick to the right side, it could be easier. Basically, it's it's just a specific form of tracking. This delivery mission is just a specific form of, of tracking. So traveling around in Rhizom is basically ju just a matter of um, being aware of your surroundings. and of course having a good mount. <laughs> okay, I, I arrived pretty much aggro free which is a first for me I must say, in winter at least. I got 500 faction points which is not bad. Another player, um, a neutral player that's not aligned with the virus or has bad fame with the virus would, uh, would receive much less, about half of this. Okay, I'll try to follow the exactly same route, seem to be the safest on the right side, well, left side on, uh, on the way back. The fourth camp is in the Savage Dunes near Tethos, near the Running Ridge workshop. It's an interesting way, not too difficult, let's just say equally difficult to this route that we just did. Just a bit longer, more aggros, more potential aggros on the way. Basically crossing the the sawdust mines region is the most difficult task in uh, in here. That's a lot of O6. I'm gonna risk getting even hit by one. Just because I'm impatient, but thankfully none of them wants to bite me. Right here in this um, empty spot you can sometimes see a boss. 
you can see a boss called GoaCast, that's a GoArray, an oversized GoArray. It's not up. Or you could see Raspacat, that's an oversized Raspal, like um, Ruka was uh, earlier in Freher Towers, if you noticed her, that was a Raspal. Now here, after the bridge is... It, that's a difficult portion of the road because there's lots of aggros and not too many options. You could try to you could have tried to take a, a hard right after the bridge. I chose to go straight forward because I'm uh, I'm sure once you're past those aggros there by the tower, you have an aggro freeway for a while so you can shake them. Now, close to this point, there's a caravan teleport, which I'm not going to show because it's uh, it's not useful for us. It's also another boss spawn, but apparently th those two bosses are not here. I went straight forward through the through the aggros. That's not the best way to do it. Of course, you should uh, attempt to to calculate a better route. Now, the next destination is the city, where you can sit down and regenerate a bit. Now, I'm only missing 700 hit points, which is not that much, so I'm not going to use my self heals. Just note you can drag some aggros to the guard if you need it on the way back. But for now, I'm just going to head to, to the fourth camp and do my delivery. I keep forgetting it's winter and there's a lot of aggros on the way. You should be able to avoid them, but you might get a hit or two again. You have to unmount to talk to the NPC, unfortunately. Now it starts getting serious, I got uh, 900 points, which is pretty nice. With this I could actually be able to buy a stack of uh, catalyzers. Level 50, but still, it's, it's something. Okay. This fifth point is one of the most difficult ones. You Normally, the easy way would be to go all the way back through Dragon Spine, Dusen the Headhurst, enter Flaming Forest from Offalvex Oasis, somewhere right here, um, and then come all the way down. Through aggros, of course, because there's always some aggro in Flaming Forest. Instead, what I'm going to do is a bit more difficult. I am uh, going to go down a ramp that's right here near the waist. And uh, come up this ramp. There's, there's a ramp about here. Can't really, can't really say without seeing the place. So there's some acros which we're going to dodge as usual. I might have been better off by just going the way I came. I chose a 
a much worse route, especially with the Kinchers. They could they could do some damage, some uh, some critical damage of one thousand hit points. That's that's too much even for a free to play. That could be too much even for a, for a paid player, for a master, if you're not careful and you take two two critical damages from uh, from two kinchers. As you can see the guards are taking care of them. And my computer is clipping. Now this portion is a bit difficult because you, you're bound to get some aggros. Maybe not in other seasons, but winter is a uh, is sure to, to have some. Now this patch of grass here is is a safe point that's usually only herbivores. But past it you have you start getting the varying zergs, capesta, kittens and lots of other Nice stuff again. So my mark for the ramp was pretty good, apparently. I can just go down the ramp. And now search for for the upwards going ramp. Let's just sit for a moment and uh, ponder the situation. So this is the fifth camp, then the sixth one would be about here in the scorched corridor. My problem is I'm going to need to, to go up the ramp to get to this point, then uh, I'm going to go down that same ramp again and uh, in order to reach the sixth camp, unless I want to run much, much longer. So I have some useful auras. I have ballet protection aura that can uh, keep me safe for, for for some 15 seconds, 14. I have speed of 3 and I have invul. But I want to keep them all for the moment I need them, if I need them. The problem is I risk taking some damage here and the greater risk is I might not be able to stop to dismount and use the auras. You can't use the auras while mounted, which kind of sucks. Anyway, I'm just gonna take a risk here because uh, talking takes too long. And I'm just gonna save my auras for, uh, for the second trip on the way down the ramp as I was saying. There's not that much aggro as I was expecting, to be honest. There's some, of course, but... Um, let's see, the ramp should be anywhere close to this point. There it is. It's actually quite nice. We have some zergs here, but nothing on the ramp, which means it's going to be pretty cool. Pre oh, of course, there had to be cutlers, and lots of cutlers. Yeah, 
that's why you have to be careful with this stuff. Now on the bright side, I died after the ramp. I have a chance to to come back and retrieve the mount. I used the teleport pack for the Oflovac Oasis uh, region. You can use teleportation packs while dead, which is the best thing ever. You don't even have to respawn first and then use the pact. So I'm going to try and um, retrieve my mount. It's some 600 meters away and uh, between me and the mount is a region full of aggros. I'm going to use even a, even a map of regeneration just for a bit of extra HP. This map is a uh, is obtained by uh, by doing the magnetic cartographer occupation in Zora. Doesn't really matter for you, but might as well mention this. All right, so we have Tyrantias on the way. Thankfully, Tyrantias are fairly blind, so I can uh, sneak past them. Actually, I'm going to set my uh, my compass to target just to be able to effectively sneak. Now, Zergs is another issue. I'm not going to try and fight Zergs or evade Zergs. They're more difficult. Now, there might be an opening between these two dots, if you see on the, on the compass. I'm just navigating directly between the dots. I'm not even looking at the map ahead of me. At, at at the information in front, just using the dots. Basically, what you what you're looking for is first um, the outpost, and once you're past the outpost, you can head for the watchers camp for the, for a tribe camp nearby that uh, can offer you protection from macros. Now I got here pretty luckily, without being attacked. Depending on season, I could have been attacked by a lot of things. Worst being Cutler. So I can just head again to my mount. Try to get my mount and try to finish my mission without dying again. Most importantly, my uh, my auras are still uh, still available. It's a good thing to have. That Cutler is not, it's not where I would like it to be. That is five continents away. Uh, what's worst about them is they punch hard. They, you, you can't easily dodge them. And uh, most importantly, they have a huge aggro range. So you can't easily go around them either. Okay. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to use my vulnerability to get my mount and uh, make it past this uh, this aggros. Of course, three of them follow me. Now I'm hoping these guards will pick up very soon on, on on the aggros. That's it. I have to keep running. Until, until the cutters are dead. It's one, one dot following me. Which kinda sucks. Please die already. I think I'm in the clear finally. By the way, if you noticed the message earlier, I, it said you will try to dodge melee attacks because I was in parry mode. So I, basically I was wearing the knives for nothing. I was using my parry ability, which is very low. Very, very low. Thankfully the self-heal is back, at least partially. I don't have better self-heals as a free-to-play. Oh 
Okay, I got one uh, 1,400 faction points, which is again not bad. This this last camps are the point where you really start seeing the advantage of having good fame with with the nation we're do, we're doing the run. Now one more camp, as I was saying, is it's exactly here in the scorched corridor. So you have to go down the ramp and then arrive somehow safely all the way here. The most dangerous point is again the ramp. So let's spend a bit of time and um, observe it. That's three Zergs and one Cutler, not to mention what could be past it. Um, that's that's difficult, actually. So, um, yeah, I, I, I went too close to the Cutler and now I have I have it aggro on me. That was a mistake. On the bright side, it uh, now I'm gonna have only Zergs to worry about. Is it dead yet? I hope it's dead. All right, now with the Cutler out of the way. I have one Zergs left, two Zergs at the bottom of the ramp, more Cutler. I have no option but to use some aura to get past them. So first I'm going to tilt the mount to follow me. And now speed. I got lucky, could have been hit for worse. See, I one one of them missed me, and one of them, and I dodged one of them. Now I'm basically running to any point they, where I can see safety. I should have used melee protection aura and mounted. And thankfully I didn't, so I'm dead again. Now some players may not have this respawn point in Scorched Corridor. They uh, they might have never came all the way here, so it might suck for them. Because at this point retrieving your mount and continuing your uh, your mission might be too difficult. I did have the respawn though, so I'm going to at least attempt doing that, attempt getting <coughs> my mount back. It's still difficult, there's a lot of aggro in here, it's still winter. That's a Kirosta, that's a lot of Kirosta. Maybe Leaking the wall will help. It's, it's very unclear. Additionally, I might have some aggros coming to me, like the regular aggros, like Nimpton, or um, I can't remember the Kipaka name right now. Okay, up, up to this point I was curiously fortunate to not get any aggro, but it does seem to compensate by having Kinchers ahead of me and Kipakas right here. To be honest, I, I don't really come to, too often in, uh, in winter in this region, so I have no idea what to expect. I'm trying to keep in the middle, past the totem, and hope no one, uh, none of them sees me. If they do, I'm toast before I can even say, uh, say help. Apparently, I did get a Kinger. They have a huge aggro range, just like Cutlers. 
So I have no chance to to arrive at my mount safely. Even if I did ar arrive at my mount, uh, mounting it and running away while still under attack would be a very, very interesting task. No. Well, it was still a good run for a free to play, I guess, so I'm just going to respawn in Pyre this time and uh, pretty much end it right here and right now. The last, uh, the last camp would have given me six, uh, not six, two thousand faction points. So if we do the math, we we could see the total would be very close to five thousand faction points. Five thousand faction points is not that much. You can get uh, seven thousand at max fame if you did. Uh, the New Horizons thing if you fed the New Horizons with products but um, New Horizons has, has a daily cap you can only do it every 24 hours so doing a faction run can only increase your faction points you can it's basically the only way to get more faction points after you you fill your quota with uh, with the transporters. So 5000 faction points is not that bad though. Getting one full stack of uh, level 100 catalyzers, the most common ones, the most commonly sought after, costs about 2000 faction points. So basically this whole run, if you manage it completely, is, uh, is worth two stacks of catalyzers and a half. Plus, you can repeat the mission every 8 hours, if you are that bored. So, it's it, it might be lucrative in the long run. Now, considering I failed the mission, I, I cannot deliver it, cannot deliver the last uh, package. I have to abandon the mission, I have to see Selix Lysius. That's the guy where I took the mission first, in the four ways, but um, I guess Everyone remembers who, where the guy was, so I'm not going to run all the way to his point. Just going to release my mount, consider him freed, hope he doesn't die in the scorched corridor between all those uh, nasty aggros. And that would be pretty much for this video at least. So, might retry one at one point, might retry with a higher level character. But that, that's pretty much for a, for a free-to-play uh, attempt.